Okay. So if you've ever done something uh, like uh, said something or done something that you regret because you were in a state of high emotion, um, first things first, just recognize that you are human and that's very natural. And I want to share with you what happens briefly, physiologically, so you understand why there are times where you really feel like maybe you can't control your emotions. So think back to the last time you actually had that moment where you maybe felt like you lost control or you said or you did something that maybe you wish you could take back. In that moment, what really happened was you had a moment where you lost access to your prefrontal cortex, which is your thinking brain or your rational brain. It's actually right up here in your forehead. Um, so think about just above your brow line. Um, that's where your prefrontal cortex exists. And this is the part of your brain that is most recently evolved. Okay, so there are times where you actually lose access to that rational thinking part of your brain. And what happens is, um, you know, our brains over all of the thousands of years of evolution have uh, learned how to protect ourselves. There, there are actually two things that really our brain is required uh, to do for us at a subconscious level. One is protection right? And that is when the fight, flight, or freeze mechanism kicks in. So back in the day, if there were a saber-toothed tiger chasing after you, you would shut down all access to anything else, and your body would literally just look for a way to survive, okay? Um, the second thing is efficiency. So your brain likes to um, be in the thinking mode as little as possible, because it really wants to conserve and preserve energy. So what it does is it always looks for um, what you've experienced in the past as a uh, familiar context, and it will try to have you do what you've done in the past. Now, both of these things are important because it's going to help you understand why sometimes you just react and maybe say something or yell at somebody. Um, now, I don't know if you have done this at work at some point in time, probably you're much more likely to do this with those who you love the most, right? Those who you're most uh, comfortable with and those who you spend the most time with, your family. They probably get to see the best of the best and maybe even the worst of the worst. All right, so here's the three-step process to really help you get a handle on any negative emotion that shows up for you. Um, so first things first, be aware of your triggers. So that's number one. Number one, what are the things that make you lose your mind? What are the things that really frustrate you? And even if you um, are pretty good at controlling emotion, again, think about the times where maybe you've just, you've snapped even, or you've, you've just gotten upset and you know visibly people can see that even if you're not lashing out. Um, those triggers are likely to be the same triggers that you'll experience again and again. So know your triggers. This is so, so helpful to know them in advance because that's going to help you anticipate a loss of, a, of emotional control. All right. So once you understand the trigger, so for me, hands down, clearly technology is probably the one I can always point to that sends me sideways. And I know this in advance and I'm very familiar with it. So I have to use this technique I'm sharing with you to keep myself in a calm place because there are times where I actually want to damage my computer when it doesn't cooperate. Um, just this morning, in fact, I was trying to sync trip it with my Google Calendar and I could not do this. And I'm thinking, gosh, this has got to be such a simple thing to do. So I get really frustrated because I think in part it's because I don't have control. In part, it's because it's so completely inefficient when technology doesn't work. And in part, I'm kind of beating myself up because I should know better. So be thinking about what's beneath, you know, what is, what is it that's actually causing the frustration? So it's not technology alone for me. It's those three things I've talked to you about. It's the feeling of losing control, of not knowing what I'm doing, of being inefficient, um, and just feeling kind of stupid, right? All three of those things will set me sideways. So what are your triggers? Now, the minute that you know the triggers, now you can go to step two and set your intention. So if you know, like me, that when you have a trigger hit, let's say something doesn't work in technology, my natural way of doing things is to get extremely frustrated. So I get uptight, I get frustrated, I get short, um, probably downright angry at times, but those are, those are some of the emotions that I know that I can feel as I spiral out of control if I don't catch it 
quickly enough. So what are the emotions that you're likely to feel? How does that scenario usually play itself out? How, how does that look for you? And by the way, it's really, really valuable to also take a look at what is the impact of that? Like when, when I behave this way, what is the impact? Like what if someone is around and actually sees this behavior? Um, what if there's somebody on the other end of the, a conversation and you have a trigger hit? What is it like to be that person and observe your behavior? And again, even if you don't explode, like I don't, I don't explode anymore, um, but, but even if you don't explode, what happens with your body language? What's your demeanor like? And what do you think the impact is? Because even if you don't say the words that you're thinking, your body language might be screaming them, right? Okay, so what is the intention? So step number two is all about how do you want to behave, right? You got to be aware of how you currently behave and what's natural and normal. But setting your intention is, okay, how would I like to experience my behavior in the face of a trigger like that. So I would say to myself, okay, next time something goes wrong technology wise, I would like to see myself slow down because usually I speed up and that does not help. I'd like to see myself slow down and experience it in a way that a rational, normal human being would and maybe reach out for help if I need help instead of trying to do it on my own. But more than anything, I'd like to do this with a sense of peace and a sense of calm. Now, that would be very, very different from my natural. So go ahead and think through for yourself next time this happens. And look, you can use a trigger who's another human being in your world that you know you react to. Maybe it's even a child. Maybe you have a child who's in a, a space right now that's emotionally frustrating. Maybe it's a spouse. Um, so if, if your trigger is connected to a particular human being, really be thinking about this. What is the impact of the... Uh, emotional reaction that you're currently having. And if you set your intention of what you'd like it to be, how different would that experience be for you and for the other person? So um, go ahead and set your intention. How would you like to behave? And I know right now you're thinking, but I don't have the possibility to be calm or relaxed in my particular scenario. But just stick with me because number three, I think, is the most important piece of this conversation. So number three is how you deal with the heightened emotion when it shows up. Now, if you already know your triggers and you've set your intention, you have already reduced the likelihood of having some sort of emotional episode that's negative. Um, but, but that's just a starting point. It actually takes practice. It takes, it takes repetitive practice to get to the place of having the self-awareness grab hold of your prefrontal cortex, which you otherwise might lose access to when your emotions are heightened, okay? So here's how you get that access back. Remember, if you are in a state of high emotion, you have lost access to the thinking part of your brain. You're not rational. You may think you are, but you're not. You're actually off somewhere and you're being controlled by your amygdala which is the part of your brain that's responsible for fight or flight or freeze mechanism, right? So in order to take control away from your amygdala and get back into your rational thinking brain, number one thing you can do is breathe. But don't just stop this video right now. I want you to stay with me for just a moment. There's a certain way of breathing that's actually going to be really helpful for you. And it's a, it's a way of breathing that will bring you back into the present and allow you to regain the access that you need to your prefrontal cortex. So I recommend that you take about 30 seconds and that you just stop wherever you are. If you can, please close your eyes. If, you're, if that would be really weird because you're in a meeting with someone and you can't do that, then go ahead and keep your eyes open. But I want you to at least breathe this way. So I want you to breathe in for a count of four. And as you're breathing in, I want you to breathe in peace or breathe in calm. Okay, so you're actually going to be thinking about the words that relate to the intention that you have. So you would breathe in peace for about four seconds. And, and I'm not too concerned. I don't think you need to sit there and go one, two, three, four. I am more interested that you take a deep breath. I would use your diaphragm to take this breath. Now, what do I mean by that? So if I asked you right now to take a deep breath, go ahead and do it. I don't care if you're driving or you're sitting at your desk, just take in a deep breath. 
And I want you to pay attention to what happened to your shoulders. Because when most people breathe in, they breathe in from their up in their, their top of their lungs where they, you don't actually get a really deep breath. So if your shoulders rose, if you took a deep breath and it looked something like this, and your shoulders rose up, then you're not using your diaphragm. You're actually using the top of your lungs. You don't get a really good breath. So try again to breathe in. And I want to, I want you to feel your stomach actually expand. You should see your stomach expand to get a diaphragm breath. So you would breathe in as much as you can. And it, and, and your stomach should be expanding. And then when you breathe out, you're going to breathe out whatever the negative emotion is that you're feeling in the moment. So I might breathe out frustration. And again, for about four seconds. It's not exactly the seconds that are important. It's can you get a full breath in, breathe in calm, and then a full breath out, breathe out frustration. And if you think that intention to yourself as you're breathing in, as you're breathing out. So I will breathe in calm, as deep a breath as I can take, and I'll breathe out frustration. I might breathe in peace next and then breathe out anger. I might breathe in love and breathe out um, any negative emotion. So this is the other thing. If you can't actually put your finger on the emotion that you're feeling, I literally use the words in my head and breathe out any negative emotion because there may be other emotional responses that are there somewhere that I'm not even fully in tune with or aware of. And so I just breathe out any negative emotion. Um, there's, there's another thing you can do, and this especially helps if you are able to be in a place where you can close your eyes, is breathe in light. So if you imagine yourself breathing like bright light into every area of your body and then exhaling anything that is not bright light, so even a grayish, dirty energy. So I know that sounds kind of woo-woo for some of you. Maybe I've lost some of you. But don't knock it until you try it. The first time, so I used to um, listen to a meditation where the beginning of the meditation before I even started meditating was breathing in light, breathing out grayish, dirty, dirty energy, breathing in love, breathing out um, anger, stress, or any negative emotion. So you get to choose your words and you get to choose the thought that you think as you're breathing in and as you're breathing out. So do what works best for you based on where you are in the moment. Maybe you need to breathe out overwhelm. Maybe you just need to breathe out stress and anxiety. So if you're sitting in your office at some point and you're just feeling overloaded, maybe there's, there's no one thing, but it's a lot of things, just try it right now. And I would recommend that you take at least five of these breaths, okay? Five in, five out. And just check after those five breaths, breathing in peace, breathing out stress, check how you feel after those five breaths. Because if nothing else, what you've done is you've got yourself centered. You're in the moment. You've just now given your brain enough oxygen to reaccess your prefrontal cortex so you can start thinking again and actually making a decision about how you want to respond versus react to whatever trigger was there in front of you. So I'm just going to do a quick recap, the three parts that I think are just like complete game changers when you get your mind around them. Um, first, what are the triggers? What is likely to bring you uh, to a place of stress, overwhelm, anxiety, frustration, anger, jealousy, fear, hatred, any of those negative emotions? Number one, know your trigger. Number two, set your intention in, in advance for how you'd like to behave in the face of the trigger. So what is it that you intend to do? How would you prefer to behave? And remember, it's never the trigger that creates your behavior. It's you and your automatic response. Because the one thing that you do have control over is the way that you respond to whatever comes at you. Okay, so that's not up to anyone but you. So, so number two is set your intention. How would I like to respond? How would I like to behave in the face of whatever trigger makes me go sideways? And then number three, breathe. And you're going to be taking deep breaths in from your dia diaphragm, breathing in the intention that you've created. So for me, it's usually peace or calm. And then you're going to breathe out whatever that negative emotion is, stress, anxiety, frustration, anger, fear, 
or use my catch-all, any negative emotion. All right. So I hope that that three part, three part process has helped you out. Um, if you're already using it and it works, please share that because it's great when other people see that. If you've never used it before and you're willing to try this out, we would love to hear your feedback about how well this works for you. If you know someone else who needs to hear this message. So if you've got someone in your world who you know tends to um, have a, an emotional response that really is something that maybe they don't like or they're not proud of or they're not happy with, please, please share this message with them. And you can catch us at the Evolve to Win show on any of your favorite podcast apps. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And it was great to be with you today. Have an awesome day.